In this presentation, I'll try to introduce open science, which has been, uh, I mean, said several times today, and I'll go through the platform. Uh, the uh, Simon's presentation was uh, very good because uh, it, it, I mean, some of the concepts were already explained, so I will concentrate on uh, definitions and ways of doing open science. So, I will try to introduce the concept and the definitions and the consideration that actually drove us uh, to where we are here. Then I'll go to the platform and then I'll go again on training and education and uh, I'll present you uh, briefly the next ACFEST because uh, if you can really act fast, there could be possibility to participate in this event. So, uh, if we look at the distributed, I mean, scientific computing in the last uh, 30 years or so, this has been evolving from a centralized computing to a decentralized computing, cluster computing, grid computing, cloud computing nowadays. And this is a, a combined effect of, of the reduction of the cost of the hardware and uh, the cost of the networks and the concurrent increase in the power of uh, uh, commercial off-the-shelf com uh, components and so the uh, bandwidth of the wide area networks. So research is becoming computational intensive, more and more computational intensive. And this is true in many, let me start few animations. This is true in several domains, uh, astrophysics, earth sciences, computing, fluid dynamics, engineering, high energy physics, and of course, life sciences. So all these simulations are then using uh, uh, high-performance computing things. On the same, on the same, the World Wide Web is evolving. Uh, we celebrated 20, 20, the 25th anniversary of the web very recently, and now we are in, in the third or the third generation of the web, what people call the, the web 3.0. And in web 3.0, we have several, uh, uh, several uh, services and several concepts like ubiquitous com connectivity, network computing, open technologies, open identities, the so-called intelligent web, the semantic web, that's uh, revolutionized the way we share content and so we, pro we can process data. So, a new concept was created more or less 15 years ago, uh, the concept of e-science. And there are three main actors uh, to in, in e-science. On uh, the top, you have the virtual research communities that uh, wants to analyze data taken in large worldwide uh, uh, laboratories and uh, or run huge data, big data, and to run applications on those data. So to let this virtual research community to access the data and to run the applications and to do, and to do so around the clock, uh, 365 days a year, uh, e-infrastructures have been created. So basically research centers, laboratories, where data are and where the scientists are and where the applications can run are connected by large bandwidth networks, research and education networks. And on top of this, we have a middleware, special software that let all these centers behave as if they were a unique computer dispersed over the network. So e-infrastructures and Web 3.0 can support the scientific method, which is the iterative procedure scientists follow since almost four centuries. So you have, uh, uh, for example, high performance computing or high throughput computing grids and clouds that are very key in uh, uh, analyzing data and producing results. You have data infrastructures, open access document repositories, and to connect data, data among the data to data and data to papers, you have uh, uh, the semantic web and the concept of linked data. But the problem is that the problem is that. Uh, 
the challenge is that you usually go from here to here in the scientific method. You start from what is existing, you analyze data, you write the paper, and you produce the results. But uh, the challenging the challenge is to walk the other way around, or uh, I mean both ways. So starting from a paper and trying to find the data that has been used to to analyze the paper, the software, and even the complete computational environment, uh, the machine where you can rerun the data and reuse the data and reuse the and, and extend if you want the analysis. So in order to do that, you need to share data. So a new concept is emerging, the concept of open science. There is not a unique definition of open science. There are many. This is, th th these are two that I like most. So open science refers to a culture. It's, there is not a recipe for, uh, for open science. It's a culture of sharing results and uh, let other scientists of your domain or other domains to use and reuse your results. And uh, open science is not only open access. You need to share all the different, I mean, it includes many aspects and stages of research processes. So not only papers, but the data and the software, and even the, the, the entire machines where the software can be run with all the libraries. So open science means open in all aspects of uh, scientific uh, uh, research. So you should, uh, of course, uh, adopt open access, uh, open standards, open data and linked data on top of open data. Open source, of course, you need to be so open that uh, citizen science becomes feasible on scientific products. And of course, you need to rely on standards. Otherwise, and to produce open educational resources for open science and uh, to, 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 to teach the attitude towards open science. Uh, so science is about connections and about sharing. So I want to show you three pictures that uh, try to, uh, to put in evidence of what I mean as connections. These are simple network connections between the different areas of the world. And you can, this is not so recent, but I don't think that uh, this is, has changed much. I mean, it's gonna change now with projects like Africa Connect or Africa Connect 2, but still you can barely see Africa here while you can see huge connection between the North, the North America and Europe. You can see also this in the, the scientific discipline. These are the connections among authors or papers. This is by, taken by PubMed. And these are uh, papers on health. And you can see that so there are strong connections and strong relations between the, 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 the Northern Hemisphere and very few with, the, with, with, the, with Africa and Latin America, for example. And you can see here in this plot the world map where countries are scaled by the number of documents in Web of Science. Web of Science is a huge database of scientific papers. So each country is rescaled by the number of documents in Web of Science written by authors living in the country. So you can see how slim is Africa because there are many people working outside or not publishing on scientific publications in Africa. And the same with the, the wall map scaled by the number of journals. So the two maps are correlated. So there is, a, there is a challenge, make African science and African scientists more visible. And there is an opportunity to exploit the infrastructure to do so. And the vision that we have in Saigeia is to promote open science in Africa, to make African science and African scientists more visible. So the Dakar Declaration, we're doing this, raising awareness of the uh, uh, about open science you are all invited to go to this link and sign the declaration and the declaration can also be signed at the institutional level so maybe we can bring this to the to the management of the Kenyatta universities and other universities in Kenya to officially endorse the open science paradigm and then we have the open science platforms made uh, federated federated means as Simon already said once one set of credentials and you can access all the services on the map and we are promoting federated identity federated credentials so the first thing is the infrastructure knowledge base is a database containing more than 4000 open access 
documents and data repositories and open educational resource repositories containing more than 30 million uh, data sets, documents, OERs. And so we built a semantic search engine on top of this infrastructure. So you can search the papers you want, so the data sets, you can discover links between data sets and other data sets or between data sets and papers. And then you can access the, you can access the data. Concerning data, this is a point that I want to stress today. Uh, putting a data set on the web is not doing open data. So the, the, um, Team Berners-Lee, the creator, the inventor of the web, uh, came up with uh, five stars uh, classification of open data. So on the web with an open license, which is a rather common way of sharing data, is just a one star. If you really want to go to multiple stars and reach five star open data, then you should your data should be semantically enrichable and should be linked. So you can connect data to other data so that you can tackle multidisciplinary problems. So what we are promoting are is five stars open data and our knowledge base contains five stars open data and the open access repository allows to store and to publish five star open data. Uh, this is the semantic search engine. This is a Google-like search engine. You can search in more than 110 languages across this uh, knowledge base and get results. So you can get information, you are connection to Google Scholar, to Altmetrix, you can get more information on each data set, and then you are redirected back to the place, to the open access repository where the data set or the paper is stored. That's another element of the um, uh, 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 open science platform. This is open access repository. This is based on the many de uh, technology developed at CERN. Uh, again, this open access repository is federated in the sense that you can use your federated credentials and so you can manually upload your resources or resources can be automatically harvested and ingested from external sources. And so we uh, developed uh, several add-ons on the standard in menu, in menu software. One thing that I want to, to underline is that when you upload a, a data set or a paper on our open access repository, you can assign to it a digital object identifier, a unique identifier that make your data set or your paper discoverable, findable. And thanks to my university, the open access repository we have in SciGaia as a prefix given by DataSite, which is an international not-for-profit not organization issuing digital object identifiers. But the African Population Health Research Center in Kenya here is the first organization in the country that has got a DataSite DOI prefix. You have the press release in the folder, in your folder. So we worked hard to make this happen, and this is just the first. We have already a DOI prefix in Nigeria, and any other university or research organization interested in getting DOI prefix to tag their data sets can, can do this. So once you have uh, uh, papers, data sets, having DOIs, you can connect them and you can create what we call research packages. So here, for example, we have the analysis of some high energy physics data through a uh, science gateway. So you have the analysis, you have the data set, and then you have the virtual machine containing the software. All these three, each of them has a DOI, and all these three is a research package. So if you get all the three, you can reanalyze the data, you can reuse the data. And the same for simulations. I think that Anastasia will talk about this about, we'll talk about this later. These are, uh, this is a research package of data and software to make some simulations, some agent-based simulations. The Open access repository in itself is a research object. So here you have 
the guidelines to build a repository. You have the virtual machines containing a clone of the open access repository, and you have all the guidelines and instructions to install it. So you should start from here. This is the virtual machine containing a clone of the SciGaia open access repository. And we already have eight clones of the SciGaia OAR being, de being deployed in Africa and Europe. So if you don't have an open access repository or you want to store your, your data on a five star open access repository, you can freely download this and start populating and assigning the OIs. And of course, you can connect this to the knowledge base and have your data integrated in the semantic search engine. Another element of the platform here of the SciGay Open Science platform is the, the Science Gateway. This is the demonstrative Science Gateway that we, we built and we maintain uh, to show the power of the Science Gateway and it's called the Africa Grid Science Gateway. As Simon said, this has been recently moved to DIT in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. And it can be accessible by huge number of identity providers. So the potential, the, the number of potential users is really huge. And so we also offer a uh, guest ID, identity providers for homeless users, for users who don't have uh, federated credentials or uh, uh, they don't have an identity provider in their university or in their research organization. And we have several applications. We have general purpose applications like Octave. Octave is a free clone of MATLAB. Or R, which is a very well-known platform for statistic analysis. And we have domain-specific applications. These are applications that um, are part of a subset of the Africa Grid Science Gateway that we refer to as the Africa Pharmacology Science Gateway and are important in health or bioinformatics. We have ClassLW, GAMR, Gromax, and so on. And we have the infection model. These are applications that have been developed and included in the Science Gateway. Of course, so we have other Science Gateways developed by the champions. And so you will see at least two today, one from Nigeria, one from Uganda, a three today, one from Frenia, one from Nigeria, one from Uganda, and you will, you, you, you will see uh, the, the power of uh, building a web interface to applications. So, what we could do in, uh, with the open science, uh, with, with the open science platform is to create this open knowledge workflow. So uh, a researcher or even a citizen science, a scientist can go to the semantic search engine, look for something, get access to a data set somewhere or an open access repository, a, be able to reuse, to rerun the, the, the data sets to rerun the analysis, to produce a new analysis, to write a paper, to save the paper on the open access repository, to assign a DOI, and to connect this DOI to the other DOIs of the previous papers. So you can increase the knowledge on a subject, and then you connect the different pieces of knowledge in a subject. Edu research and development that we have been that, that that we are talking now is just one of the vertices of what is called the triangle of knowledge that connects research and development, education and training, and innovation. So e infrastructures are very good to to connect this to this, but you also need what is called training infrastructures and training materials. And you want to have this as open education resources in the definition of OER given by, made by UNESCO. So you really want to have open education resources freely available. So uh, uh, along with e-infrastructures, training infrastructures have to be built. So in SciGaia, we decided to, to create a courseware infrastructure based on open edX. And uh, we are populating this with um, contents developed in the course of the project, but we are, of course, open to host open educational resources coming from other universities, other research organizations. And the goal is to make this adopted in university curricula across Europe and Africa. In our Science Gateway, we have the training and educational material. This is the homepage, you click here, 
and this has been already shown by Simon, we have several sections and for each section we have lots of uh, ma training material in different formats as presentations, our videos, as courses. So we have our own courseware based on OpenEdX where we have, we, where we have our own courses and, and we can host somebody else's course under, under an open license. And we have uh, entire lectures. So we host lectures on building science gateways, on creating service providers of identity federations and so on. And of course, we can even host courses on specific topic. So ACFEST, this I will go very quickly because Simon already mentioned this. This is one of the most important tools, I would say, we developed in the project, concepts. The concept of bringing people two weeks in a room and showing them some technologies, uh, uh, listening from them, the application they want to integrate, they want to, do, they want to develop and actually do it, do this in two weeks. And then they go away, they go back home and we support them as champions. They become champions and we support them until their application is fully functional and integrated in a science gateway. So we have been running two, uh, two series of ACFEST, I mean two in Catania, one in Lagos, at the Lego State University, I mean, Benjamin will, will surely say something, is, uh, has been the organizer of the ACFEST in Nigeria. And so we will be running the next ACFEST in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, next, in the next two weeks, from next Monday to the 24th of February. So we already opened the call for applications and we got one selected, one application was a letter from Kenya about uh, computational chemistry. And we could accept more if you are really super fast. So if you can afford going to add this and you have a, a concrete application, concrete use case that you want to integrate into a science gateway, uh, we can help you in creating the application and we can really quickly evaluating the application and welcome you to Addis Ababa for the next two weeks. So this is a message that I want, I want you to keep. Uh, of course, uh, um, the, the model of the ACFEST is in the SciGaia website. All the presentations are there. Also, the training infrastructure is uh, deployable under the DevOps, um, uh, DevOps paradigm. So you click a button and from a GitHub account, you can instantiate all the machines that you need for the training. Uh, keep in mind this possibility to participate to the ACFEST next week. So let me summarize. Open science can be implemented only if the openness paradigm becomes pervasive in day-by-day -day research. So not only sharing documents, but sharing all the different aspects and elements. Uh, science outputs, reproducibility and reusability, which is much more interesting the possibility to reuse data and maybe to reuse data in different contexts or to tackle multidisciplinary uh, uh, challenges. So these are key to walk through the knowledge path. If you remember the scientific method, not only from the top to the bottom, but the other way around. So in, in, uh, at SciGaia, we are very much committed to promote the uptake of the open science paradigm and so the open science platform is our demonstrative, but I would say not demonstrative, the real open science uh, platform that people can use to share data and applications. And so using this DOI concept with the, the, that is very important uh, uh, to us, I mean, open access repositories can be connected to Science Gateway. So you can go to an open access repository, discover a data set, and be redirected to a portal where you can reanalyze this data set. And the last, uh, the take home message I want to, to leave today that all comments of the SciGaia platform are freely usable. So you can register and use the, uh, the services that we have in the platform, or you can clone them at your premises as many times and wherever this is needed. So everything is released under open license. You can clone it, you can install it, and you can run it. You can take 
all the platform, some bits and pieces, and uh, try to merge this with your own open platform. So that's it. Thank you very much.